Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Pine Hills Community Church, 10 o'clock service this Sunday. We're glad for you guys who are here in the house and for you out there in social media land. Hello, praise the Lord. You could have been any place else, but we're thankful that you're here. And if you don't mind, go ahead and hit your like button, your share button. We want others to experience what we're experiencing here today in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ at Pine Hills Community Church. It's something I like thinking about in a way, and that's Abraham. Abraham went through some of everything, but one thing I noticed about Abraham, and I'm, and I'm glad it comes to my mind, and that is this. When he's up, we still find him building a fire. When he's down, we still find him building a fire. And that's just another code of saying, you know what? He went somewhere and he offered up sacrifice to his God. When he messed up, when he messed up, that's letting us know he went and he built the fire to the Lord. That is, he sought God's face. Lord, forgive me. Clean me up, Lord. I messed up on that one. When things are going good, we still did the same thing. And what does that say to you and me? We need to praise him. The scripture says, in everything that has breath, give God praise. Praise. We may not like what we went through last week or maybe how things went this morning. But he says, still praise me. You praise me. I know what I'm doing. I know what you're going through. You just do what I want you to do. Praise me. Lift me up. Give me glory. I will be the one. I will be the one who work out that heavy stuff. You just do what I want you to do. Just praise me. Just praise me. From your heart. And not, 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 not fake it till you make it, but let this be something you really sincerely feel from your heart. Lord, we thank you for all things. We may not have liked the way things went last week, Father. It may be a family situation. It may be a relational thing. It may be something on the job, Father. It may be something that had to do with your health. Whatever it was, God, we know you're in the midst of it, and we know, Lord, that you're going to handle it in your time. In the meantime, God, we, we praise you and give you glory. We still want to be able to share you, Lord, even through our just the things that we go through that are difficult and negative in our lives. You're still there, God, working it out. We don't like Romans 8, 28, and it says, and we know that all things work together for the good to those that love you, those who you have called according to your purpose, God. We still praise you, Lord, in and all. And we say amen and amen. And now we'll be led into our corporate prayer by PACC's Voices of Praise. Hallelujah. 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 How y'all doing this morning? Glory. If y'all know God has been good today, can y'all stand up on y'all feet and say, God, he's been good?
really love you. I really love you. No matter the situation, I really love you.
you got Jesus. Come on, I need somebody to say, glad I got Jesus. Come on, Anthony, can you give us just a little bit more? Come on, Anthony. speakers are on but I can't hear myself I think they're out in the audience um, once again good morning everybody it is good to see all of you amen and I want to say thank you so much to Anthony and thank you to our guest on today pastor Michael Norman amen 
Amen. 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 So it is it is good to be in the house of the Lord on today. Those who are watching us via um, Facebook, thank you so much for joining us. Um, you could be anywhere else, um, but we thank you so much for stopping by Pine Hills Community Church to be with us on uh, this morning. I want to say thank you to the team this morning. Uh, those who are watching us, you missed it today. Um, there was some breakfast served, so we want to uh, give it up for the team of serving breakfast. Come on, y'all make some noise for them. Amen. Amen. So I definitely want to say thank you uh, uh, to them. Also, I want to say thank you to those who were able to make um, the funeral on this past uh, uh, Friday. Um, we really appreciate you. Thank you to the music department. Uh, we've had some um, former members that came to assist us, and uh, it was great. Thank you to all of you. Thanks to all of you, whether it's um, on behalf of Miss Pam uh, Farrell. Thank you for your text messages. Thank you for your gifts, your money, um, everything. Thank you so, 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 so much. Uh, for what you do. We are a family and we stick together. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I want you to know, and it's been going on here, that your church is here for you. Amen. And we do want to, we want you to know this, man. Um, um, I always say this. I got a chance to say this to our seniors, um, Wings of Faith, is don't do life by yourself. Don't do this life by yourself. Um, a lot of times we ask people, hey, if you need anything, are you okay? A lot of times people say, no, I'm good. I'm okay, don't need anything. Um, sometimes people need a hug, love, prayers, anything that you can give. If you slide a little something in the hand, just a little something, just to let them know, hey, you have a family that really, really cares for you. Amen? Amen, amen. So we, wanna we want to not just be about words. Um, we want to definitely be about action uh, here at Pine Hills Community Church. So once again, thank you for that. Also, still be on the stand on standby as it relates to Mr. Nixon's, uh, Brother Nixon's funeral. Um, there's an email that is going to be going out. Uh, I know, church, we've been pulling on you, um, but um, the family needs help, um, um, financial help with the um, Funerals. So whatever you can give, whatever you can give, we want to help our brother out. Amen. Amen. That's whatever you can give. We want to be able to uh, help Mr. Nixon. If it was him, he would be here helping somebody else. And so um, he's one of our own. We want to help the family. So you're going to get an email um, asking um, you to give. And whatever you want to give, it'll go straight to the family. Um, as we support them. Amen. Also, um, uh, we have next, right now we have schedule, schedule our leadership huddle next Saturday. So we ask it all of our ministry leaders um, to be here. All right. So um, 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 you, you already got the text messages from uh, Ms. Maxwell. So definitely be here so that we can get some things done because we got some stuff we got to do. Uh, for the remaining of this year. And so I want you to uh, jump on board. Make sure if you don't have the information, see Sister Maxwell for that. Also, we have, we're going to be having a prayer breakfast uh, for all of our leaders and volunteers. If you have a leadership position, whether you're a trustee, whether you are a uh, clergy, whether you are a, uh, you serve somewhere in the church, um, we're going to have a prayer breakfast um, August 20th, August 20th, you'll get more information about that. Um, we definitely want to come together and pray. I believe uh, things move when we got God uh, before us, and also things move when we got people who understand their assignment and their roles in the kingdom. Amen? Amen. So definitely be on standby for that as well. Also, uh, Bible study will resume uh, starting this Wednesday. You will see a, a difference. We are doing Facebook Live. We're also going to be um, in person, um, and we're looking at still doing conference call, all right? 
And so we will not be actually inside this particular sanctuary. We will be doing our live Bible study from our gap room. So you're going to be seeing some changes. Pine Hills Community Church, please uh, be aware you're going to start seeing some changes. Um, we're trying to make sure we do ministry and serve as much as we can for everybody to be on. We're trying to touch every age group um, as much as possible. So we will be expanding our um, 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 ministry as it relates to Bible study. So I'm happy about that. Amen. 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 I also want to say thank you. I got a lot of announcements. I want to say thank you to uh, uh, our spiritual education department uh, for putting on vacation Bible school. If you was not there, you missed it. Amen. So I want to say thank you so much to uh, uh, Dr. Fleet and um, Reverend Christian, um, Reverend Kute. Thank you so much for taking out your time to provide Vacation Bible School. This is our time of just kind of seeing how it will roll out. Um, um, so I'm, I'm excited about where we're headed next year. Our spiritual education department will be putting some things in place um, where you can tap in at any time. And so just to build up your faith, increase your faith in the things of God. So continue to be on the watch out for them as well. Um, I think that's pretty much it as it relates to the announcement. Um, if you can, let's stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. And let's go to, I need you to, there's two particular books we're going to go to. And um. If you can go to Amos, eight, verse eleven. Amos eight, verse Amen. Amen. And then I want you to pin that, but then we're also going to go over to John 10. Okay? So just, just be on standby. We're going to go over to John 10. I'm going to tell you where we're going to go from there. All right. before we do that I also want to say if you haven't already two things number one please share if you're on Facebook go ahead and share help us get this gospel out uh, share today's um, message I'm doing it right now um, we want to support our media department and we want to support our church all right we want to help get the word out so I just shared it in hopes that we bless somebody. Good to see all of those who are on live. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Amen. Yes. Yes. That's it. Here we go. Amos chapter uh, 8 verse 11. It says, the days are coming. declares the sovereign Lord when I will send a famine through the land listen to this y'all not a famine of food or a thirst for water but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord I'm going to read this one more time the days are coming declares the sovereign Lord when I will send a famine through the land, it's not going to be a famine of food, a thirst for water, but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. Now here it is. I need you to go to, go to John 10. And I'm going to read... Verses 1 through 10. 
Bible says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entered not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Verse 3 declares, To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. The Bible goes on to say, And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goes, goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will, will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were, uh, which he spoke, spake unto them. Verse 7 says, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. Watch this. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Verse 10 says, and we all know this, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I love this. I am come. Y'all don't know when to praise God. That they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. God bless this message in Jesus' name, amen. I want to speak to you from the subject title, The Voice. The Voice. Um, one thing that I found out, when it comes down to famines, I won't deal with it long. Famines deal with a drought. Means there's some something that is gonna go without. And one thing that I looked at, and I can't stay there long, and maybe you can do your own Bible study on it, eight, Amos chapter 8, verse 11. He says it very clear here. I will send a famine on the land. People will be hung, people will be hungry, but not for bread. They will be thirsty, but not for water. They will hunger and thirst for a message. I like how Good News Translation puts it. From the Lord. The sovereign Lord has spoken. They will hunger and thirst for a message. Church, one thing that I, um, as pastor, I'm very sensitive about and uh, when it come down to my prayer life and when it come down to standing before you. I say, God, if I'm ever to preach in front of your people, I know that I'm in a place where I can possibly miss you. So my prayer is, is that if, you, if, I, if, if I am your chosen one, as you have had it out to be, please, God, let me be able to speak to my people. Let me, allow me the grace to be able to tap into their address without talking to them every day. At some point, can you send confirmation to those to say, you know what, that is my pastor. Not because he look apart. Not because of, I got a family. It's because when he speaks, it does something, it, it makes my baby leap. There are some people that when they look at their leader, that he is just another man or woman. Good to see you. Yeah, he is just another man, he's another man, he's just another woman. And you can tell when a person has a view like that, when he's just a man or another woman, because watch this, they recognize that you are the leader, but they don't have the respect. And sometimes the respect is not done 
by so much your presence. It's not done by so, so much of what you say. Sometimes respect come in time when the signs follow the leader. So God, here's my prayer, is that when I speak, I don't want to speak from me. I want to speak from you because I need them to hear your voice. I need them to know that God, just in case they forget, you're still real. Most assuredly, man, this, 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 we, when we look at this, according to this particular book, John chapter 10, and we see that according to Jesus, we are his sheep, the flock of his pasture. In the book of John, chapter 10, ex expands on this wonderful theme, starting in verse 1. We see that anyone who enters into the sheep pen other than the gate is a robber or a thief. I, th I, 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 I take this church to mean this, that one who does not enter through the normal way is one who is not authorized to be there. Or to say anything like they are authorized to. In other words, they are illegal. They are illegal. You got to understand here, let me give you some history of this. In John's gospel, after the great conflict with the religious leaders regarding the, the man born blind, the religious leaders had shown themselves to be so unhelpful and cruel to the man. His parents and the common people in, the, in general that Jesus felt it necessary to talk about the contrast between heart and work as a leader to God's people and the heart and work of many of the religious leaders of this day. Uh, watch this. Most assuredly, this is a phrase peculiar to the fourth gospel, and it generally introduce them, introduces a solemn answer, uh, uh, asseveration about Jesus and his mission. He who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other, uh, uh, other way, the same is a thief and a robber. The reason why it says that is because political and spiritual leaders were often called shepherds in the ancient world. Do the research. Isaiah 56 verse 11, Jeremiah 3 verse 15. Jesus explained that not everyone among the sheep is a true shepherd. Some are like thieves and robbers. One mark of their being a thief and a robber is how they gain entry among the sheep. The idea is that there is a door, a proper way to gain entry. Not everyone who stands among the sheep comes that way. Some climb up some other way. The religious leaders gained their place among God's people. The sheep spoken of here through, watch this, personal and political connection, through formal education, through ambition, manipulation, and corruption. That means, watch this, let me bring it to you. You can have a voice in the house that is in position, but he's not legal. It is more than you going to school. We have totally messed this up because when we look for pastors, we want to look for do they have seminary education. But you can have seminary education and not have the calling of God on your life. And if you don't have, a, oh my God, if you don't have a man of God or a woman of God that can tell you, hey, there is an anointing on your life. But watch this, you going to school is not, watch this, that uh, 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 you going to school does not mean that God calls you. You going to school only enhances the call that is on your life. You are already called, but I'm sending you to school school so that you can have more education in what you're doing there are some people who push away seminary they call it the cemetery I don't believe in that I believe that if you're gonna walk in something go ahead and get go take some classes go take some courses it is nothing wrong with you building up your library in where you are because you never know who you're gonna come in contact with yeah. So you had some of these shepherds 
that took the place of having a voice or wanted to be a shepherd. And the Bible talks about, man, they, they, man when you study to do the research, they would be thieves and robbers because they were illegal. You don't have the hand of God really on your life. That's, that's why you got to be careful of what you put in your church. Because some folk function, Sister Scott, in an area where they're not legal. You look like you hold weight. You act like you hold weight. But nothing shakes in the kingdom because you're not legal. It may seem like it's all right for a season. But if you're not called, if the God's hand ain't on you in that area, sometimes, um, I don't even much want to say sometimes, it's better for you to just back up and say, God, let me work what you want me to work. Let me do what you called me to do. Because in the end of the day, God, we want to see your power demonstrated in the earth. Anybody that's illegal has to be a manipulator. Anybody that's illegal has to be corrupted. They will try to be sneaky. They will try to do things under the table. Oh my God, let me expose some things in here. They will try to use their name as weight. You got to understand, that's why you can't be intimidated by folk that say they got a title. Y'all don't want to help me preach up in here. You can't be intimidated by people who got a title. Because watch this, you can have a title, but you ain't got no power. You, oh, okay, 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 okay. Some of you have allowed people with titles to intimidate you. And I'm not just talking about church. Just because you got a title don't mean that you got the hand of God in that area. Signs and wonders shall follow them. When you are backed by the power of God and you got the Holy Spirit on your side, signs and wonders shall follow. You're not a husband if you just carry in the title. You got to do what husbands do. Y'all, like, where my fellas at up in here? You got to do what we do. You got, you, uh, where my fellas? I, I need some real husband. Why my men, y'all quiet in here? I wish I had some real husband. You got to do what we do. You got to work hard. You got to make sure bills get paid. You got to, y'all ain't, why y'all, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Charles. They don't want to help me preach it up in here. When you start talking about this stuff, we get very quiet. But I need some real men up in here. Come on, well, what, what, let me just skip over my men and talk to my ladies. You watch this, you can be a wife. You got the title, but you got to do what wives do. Do you know how to cover your man? Do you know how to pray for your man? Do you know how to help support your man? Do you know how to watch this? Even when he ain't right, you're still there. And you're going and petitioning God on his behalf and say, God, not do it. God, not work it. You got, watch this. If you're a wife, you're prophesying. You're reminding him of what God said over his life. Come on, I need what God is saying. No, I don't just need you to have a title. I need you to function. And the things... Of God, yeah, man, uh, yeah, uh, this is this is good. Maybe the problem, Sister Christian, is that we have illegal voices, and the illegal voices are present in our lives. I wonder if, when I looked at the sheet, I had a question early this morning, God. I wonder if sheep don't care about faces. Shouldn't the sheep be able to see who the person is who's talking? When I listen, when I when I when I check this out, because I'm like, why he got Why do the sheep got to know the voice? Why can't the sheep just look at the shepherd and be like, that's the man I'm supposed to be with? Now we talk about animals now. Because please understand, John chapter 10, he's using this teaching, this metaphorical teaching. He's using this teaching to show something. And watch this. When I looked at it, she depend heavily on their vision. I was like, wait. They depend heavily on their vision? But then the more I read, it said this. They have excellent peripheral vision and can see behind themselves without turning their heads. 
They can look this way and only they can still look straight and know exactly what's going on behind them. However, they they have poor depth perception. They cannot see immediately in front of their noses. So when something or a person is before them, they can't really see who it is. Okay. Some vertical vision may also have been sacrificed in order to have a wider field of vision, it says. For example, it is doubtful that a sheep would be able to see something in a tree. It's hard for him to see what's right in front of him, and it's hard for him to see what's above him. Those sheep have vision. Listen to me, church. There are other areas where there is a void. Though you have vision, there's other areas where there's a void. When your vision has a void, come here church, you will have to trust his voice. When you can't see ahead like you desire, you got to trust the voice of God. When you can't see What's going on? What's going to happen in your future? God, I trust you. God, I can't trace you, but I believe that you're right around the corner. As Jesus' sheep, we should be able to listen to his voice and follow him because we clearly recognize his voice. Jesus is able to lead us precisely because we hear his voice and follow after him. The gatekeeper opens the gate for Jesus and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out when he has brought out all of his own. You got to understand about a shepherd in those times, man, the shepherd, he would come to a place and there would be a gatekeeper and the shepherd would come and leave his sheep in this pen and when the shepherd comes and leave his sheep in the pen he comes to the gate because he just can't walk in the gate because there's a gatekeeper there's a gatekeeper there's a person that watch this wait you might be the shepherd but you got to wait right here you're just not going to walk through this gate how you want to walk through this gate watch this if you want your sheep call them and the way, watch this, if the sheep respond to your voice, the sheep is going to show me a sign because it's walking our way. You don't go in the pen and pick your sheep. Because a real shepherd, watch this, spend time with his sheep. That's why when I call you, pick up your phone. That's why when I call you, pick up your phone. When I, when I, when I want to come and see you, Pastor, Pastor on the way, yeah, let me make some time. Let me clean up real quick. Why? Because, because a real shepherd want to spend time with his people. He's not somebody that's standoffish. He's not somebody that's standing in a pulpit, just give orders, and don't have a relationship with you. No, I want to know how you're feeling. I want to know how you're doing. I want to know what's going Y'all ain't going to only got two claps. It's fine. It's fine. I've been doing this. Here, watch this. Uh, uh, I want to know how you're doing. Why? Because a shepherd wants to be amongst his sheep. He has a love for his sheep. He cares for his sheep. He wants to know what's going on with the sheep that he's over. Just like pastor, that's how God is. God knows what's going on with you, but sometimes prayer is good because he wants you to speak it from your own mouth. He wants to spend time with you. He wants to have a relationship with you. That's a real good shepherd. The shepherd wants to spend time so that when he speaks, you come running. And watch this, the gatekeeper would be standing at the gate 
to see whether or not the sheep is going to come running. Because if you're a real shepherd, the sheep know your voice. Watch this. The sheep got vision, but he lacks vision. But when you look at, let me share with you the hearing of the sheep. Sheep have excellent hearing. Listen to my research. They can direct their ears in the direction of the sound. So their ears move wherever they hear a sound. Their head can be formed, but their ears start turning because they hear a sound. Watch this. Sound arrives at each ear at slightly different times with a small difference in amplitude. Sheep are frightened by high-pitched and loud voices such as barking dogs or firecrackers, which means, watch this, if you sound anything like that, Though that sheep will hear it, you make the sheep scared because it's a sound that it's not used to. You know what I'm missing sometimes and I'm not seeing that we don't have? We lack the fear of the Lord. You, okay, we lack the fear of the Lord, but let me, let me slide this over to something. We lack the fear of God but then at the same time, if you don't have the fear of God, you won't respect him in the mere fact that when he's speaking, he wants you to hear him. Okay? Now, if you are hearing, watch this, if this sheep is hearing loud noises, and he's like, wait a minute, something just ain't right. I need to get away from this. What have you become so comfortable with in your life that, watch this, the sound don't matter no more? What have, what have we become, what have we become, what, what, what have we walked into to where the voice of God don't matter? It should matter. And the way that you show that it should matter is that when you hear another voice trying to take God's place, you should get away from it. But for some of us, we didn't got so numb in the things of God to where, watch this, you, what you're hearing, you know it ain't God, but you stay right there. You know this is not God talking. You know God didn't tell you to go slash their tires. You know God didn't tell you to go cuss them out. You know God didn't tell you to sit at that table and talk about them all night. You know, y'all ain't going to help me preach up in here. But you sit right there. And we wondering why, why are we so jacked up? Could it be because you don't respect the voice of God, but you respect all the other voices? Everybody can come and speak in your ear except God. We in some, we in some, we in times of tragedy, and it's not about a pandemic. It's because we don't want to hear God. We don't want to wait on God. We don't want to wait on the timing of God. We don't want to sit and spend time with God. And sometimes you need to be able to sit down and say, God, I'm not going nowhere until you talk to me, until you reveal to me what am I supposed to do with the time that you have allotted? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Okay. Okay. I'm out of here. Here it is. Here it is. As stated, sheep ears are directed where the sound is. They are intentional about making sure they hear what's being released. That when they hear something, they're sensitive. They're, li they're, li <laughs> they're listening and they can tell uh, that ain't God. Watch this. They're educated enough. 
I know they're animals, but they're educated enough. Y'all ain't gonna hear me, Deacon Clyde. They're educated enough that, watch this, I, I, I know my shepherd's voice because I've spent time. I know they say that sheep are dumb, but we ain't that dumb. Okay? If your dog can answer you when you call his name, why can't you answer God when he call your, y'all, y'all, I'm trying to, I'm trying to preach now. They ain't going to let me preach. Uh, uh, but here it is. God is saying, are animals more higher than you? We in the time now where watch it. You don't see a, 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 a male dog going to sleep with another male dog. And, and we still trying to fix, and we trying, and we trying to make stuff work like it's God. We don't want His voice. There's some things, yes, that I believe there's a there's a there's a animal there's an animal kingdom, but then there's a call the kingdom of God. There's some stuff you don't want to take from the animal kingdom because the animal operates off His nature. He do what He do. But there's some stuff that the kingdom of God, oh, we, are, we as people, we should be able to learn from the animal kingdom that watch this. I do what I do, but I do it because God has already positioned me to do what I do. I am who I am because I serve the God I am. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so, we in a place. All right, get up out of here. Romans 10, verse 17, says this. So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. Now, I believe this metaphorical teaching points out to us that we must have spiritual ears. Yes, I believe that there are natural voices, meaning people in your life that can help direct you. But more importantly, when you look at, when you're studying John chapter 10, watch this. If you're going to hear God, some of our generation have been messed up because they think that it's just, it's like you hearing a man. No, no. When God talks, sometimes, watch this, he speaks through his word. But you got to have an ear to hear. It's a spiritual ear. It's an ear that's there, but you can't see it. That when you read in the text, you got an ear that's open up to the spirit. Okay, okay. When you look at Genesis chapter 1, God creates the heaven and the earth, and then he, stays, he starts telling everything to be this, do that, be this, do that. You don't see no ears there. You don't see no ears there. Why? Because watch this. It's an activation of the spirit. It's something being done through the spirit realm. There's a supernatural thing that is occurring. And so watch this. In the times that we're living in, we got to make sure that we have a spiritual ear, even sometimes when you can't hear him with your natural ear. He's not trying to, oh my God, he ain't trying to talk to you directly. He's trying to tell you, open up your spirit and hear what I'm trying to tell you. Then watch this. When I see a thing, that's what it, oh my God. That's what it should be. But if your ear is not open to him, you won't be able to hear him because you're trying to do it with your natural abilities. And we haven't had, oh God, where are the leaders that can get with their people and the people can humble themselves and say, you know what, Pastor, I have been missing it. I've been doing things through the natural and I haven't been hearing God in the spirit. That's why Miss Pam, that's, that's why Miss Pam, as much as we grieve, as much as we mourn, as much as I lost my dad and you lost your mom, Miss Pam, you got to, you got to, oh my God, you got to, you got to hear what the spirit is saying through all of this. Because if you don't ever hear what the Spirit is doing, 
if you're never in God's word, if you don't never let the words jump from the text inside of you, if you don't never let it, let it bring life into your situation, if you're never open to what God is saying, then you will have perspective of man and you'll be operating as man. But sometimes when you lose a loved one, God is saying, I don't want you to be like man. I want you to know this is a home going celebration. If they are saved, they are, oh my God, they have an eternal home. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And so while we sit here and cry, God is saying they having a party up there. Y'all ain't going to help me preach. I know you're going to miss them, but while you're missing them and you're crying, God, I see you doing something in the spirit. My tears may be coming down. I may be missing them, but God, I know something is happening in the supernatural realm that I can't see. All right, all right, okay. There's something happening in the spiritual realm. There's something happening in the spiritual realm. There's something happening in the spiritual realm. There's something happening in the, I'm prophesying now. There's something happening in the spiritual realm. For some of you, you're going through hard times. For some of you, you're going through life transitions. But there's something happening in the spiritual realm. God always got something going on in the spiritual realm. Though it may be the end on this side, there's a whole nother level on another side. And sometimes that's why God say you got to be led by the spirit. Because if you're not led by the spirit, you won't know what the spirit is doing. And watch this, sometimes the spirit will have a time where he don't reveal to you in that time but if you just hold on to God and trust God the spirit will reveal in time what God was doing because whenever the Holy Spirit speaks or whenever God speaks you will see the manifestation of the so okay whenever God speaks you will see the signs and the wonders that follow it you will see the manifestation that follows it and you got to get people ready. I'm trying to tell you, Pine Hills, you got to come out this old mindset of what was. You got to you gotta tap into what is the spirit saying to our house? Because some of you, you're stuck in the past. Y'all ain't going to help me. I know y'all ain't going to help me, but I'm pastor now. But let me tell you this, as your shepherd, you got to snatch yourself out of the past and say, God, open me up to what you're seeing. Open me up to where you're taking me. Oh, my God. Don't let me. Don't let me be so consumed in me. Man, but let me be consumed in you God show me somebody say show me yeah show me show me God what you're doing in my life show me God what you're doing in my church show me God what you're doing in my personal ministry show me God what you're doing in my marriage show me God what you're doing with my friendships God I'm lonely in this season show me what you're doing in my relationships God show me show me show me and God watch this I just want to be able to hear you I want to be the sheep that hear your voice I want to be the sheep that know your voice that God when you open up your mouth God I'm going to come running after you God when you open up your mouth God I'm going to come running after to you is there anybody up in here that can testify it ain't nothing like hearing the voice of God is there anybody in here that can testify when I heard the voice of God nothing else matters I need somebody to tell somebody else tell them listen to the voice okay all right listen 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 uh uh uh, you got to be spirit led. For those who are watching me, you got to listen to his voice. Not a voice. The voice. Listen to not a voice. The voice. Because when you get connected with God and you become born again, it requires a new life. It requires a new way. In order to get what's, watch this, what's ours, we must be ready to hear the voice assigned to our lives. Please understand when you got, uh, um, um, one thing I need to tell y'all, you got to be God connected. Because John chapter 8 verse 47 says, whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is, watch this, is because you're not of God. You got to be God, watch this, you got to be God connected because God connection comes with blessing. According to Luke chapter 11 verse 28, he said, but he said, blessed rather are those who 
who hear the word of God and keep it. Oh my God, I got to give y'all some more. God connection also comes with direction. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21 says, and your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. When you turn to the right or when you turn to the left, y'all ain't going to hear what I'm saying. God connection, when you get connected to God, it is a faith increaser. That's why Romans 10 chapter 17 says, so faith come from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Increasing faith is the hearer's portion. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Your faith increasing is your portion. Your faith increasing is the hearer's portion. And this is the key that gets you to do the impossible or to see the impossible because it is faith that moves mountains. But if you are not hearing, watch this, the word of God, and you don't have God's voice in your ear, that which is in front of you that may seem hard, you won't be able to move it because you don't have the voice of God. Oh, my God, you don't have God in your ear to tell you this is how you should do this. This is how you should address this. This is how, oh, my God, you got to speak to the mountain and tell the mountain to move. Y'all ain't going to help me preach in here, but I came to tell somebody, you got to get connected to God and hear his voice. Uh, I gotta get up out of here. Um, this is my last thing. When you look at when you look at this voice and you look at John 10, it seems like in this metaphor, it's like Jesus is showing himself that he everything, man. He the gatekeeper, he the shepherd. He's showing he everything. Look, look, when you study the gatekeeper, do y'all know <laughs> that the gatekeeper, when the wolves come, the gatekeeper would lay in the gate and watch this. While the sheep are back there doing what sheep do and wolves are coming, the, 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 wolf, the, the, the gatekeeper is standing, is laying down, Quan. He laying down to see what the wolves going to do. Because, watch this, wolves, if you're coming, you're going to have to come through me. I'm just sitting here waiting to see what you're going to do. Y'all missing what I'm saying. Y'all don't know when to shout. God is trying to tell some of y'all, just focus on what you're supposed to be doing. And let me be the gatekeeper. I'll deal with your enemies. Quan, he's saying, Mr. Lee, you don't have to worry about haters. I ain't got time being a pastor worrying about people who don't like me. And I let you not like me. Because watch this, I ain't got time to deal with haters. Everything you got to say, everything you want to say, everything you want to do, watch this, I serve a gatekeeper. Do I got anybody in here that say, Pastor Miles, I'm right along with you. Oh, I'm right along with you. I serve a gatekeeper, and he's waiting for the enemy to act up. He's waiting for the wolves to show their ugly head. Then he says, Mr. Lee, I am the good shepherd. Because if you are legal, when they see wolves, they run away. I'm talking Bible. Watch this, Tristan. If you are legal and you're not the chosen one by God, you're not going to know how to handle tough time. Okay. You're not going to know how to handle tough times. But when you're called by God, and you're approved by God. You don't have to have an education to be approved. You don't have to have the title to be approved. All you got to do is have the hand of God on your life so that you'll know how to handle when tough time come, what to do. And watch this, they'll know because it's shown that you know how to handle when tough time come. Because they come. Y'all better hear me today. Tough times coming. There's a reason, Sister Scott, that I'm telling you, you better hear God's voice. Because they coming. You, 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 you might not want to hear it. You might not want it. Those of who are watching me online, watch and see what I say. They're coming. 
and those that are not connected to God those who are not tapped into God you're gonna be fumbling trying to figure out what should I do but those of us that are believers those of us that are saved those of us that know that watch this tough time is sure to arrive but the blood of Jesus y'all ain't gonna help me it's gonna be over my house though when everything else is being tore up oh my god the blood of Jesus is gonna sustain my house so here's what I told my children the other day because the Lord told me to tell y'all this he said y'all need the PPP loan he said, I got to get up out of here, Reverend Christian. He said, he need the PPP loan. I said, the PPP loan? Yeah, and then I started thinking about, wait a minute. The other day we was inside the house. My wife was working, and I'm trying to get some stuff done at a, on our pool. And uh, my kids wanted to go outside, Dr. Fleet. And I said, okay, y'all can go outside. But the thing is, when you go outside, you better stay in this yard. Um, if I can't see you from this window, you in a bad place. That means I can't see you. Uh, 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 we got a whole big problem. You don't, you're not just going to have some, a problem with somebody snatching you. You're going to have your daddy snatching your behind right back in this house. We're going to have a little issue. Y'all don't want to hear that, but that's all real and good. My thing is, they went outside, Reverend Christian, and there was a truck that showed up. I knew who the truck was, but they didn't know who the truck was. I wanted to see what Legacy in Heaven was going to do. Legacy in Heaven, they on the bike, and they start going towards, watch this, the parameters which I had set in place towards the truck. I told them to stay in the yard. They stayed in the yard, but Mr. Lee, what they did was they started walking towards the truck. I always told them if a car shows up, you run back in the house. Don't you walk towards no car. So, Sister Christian, you better believe I had that conversation. It wasn't too nice. Okay? And so here it is. They walked in. They walked in the house. I told them because here it is. There are position parameters in place for their prosperity. Okay? There are position parameters in place for their prosperity. There are position parameters in place for their prosperity. In order for you to enjoy the prosperity, in order for you to enjoy the success of your life, in order for you to enjoy, watch this, the life that God has given, the watch this, the life that your daddy has given you, what I need you to do is understand there is a position parameter right there in place for your, oh my God, for your prosperity. I say, God, you got to show me this in the text. He said, well, go and look at Job. The enemy went to God, oh my God. He said, God, listen to, you got to hedge up. He said, you got to hedge up protection around him. I can't get to him unless you move the hedge. Some of y'all watch this, you see the hedge as limits. But if you really hear God and you really tap into the spirit, you will know that the hedge that God got around you is really something not to keep you bound. It's really something to let you know that there's a level of prosperity on your life. But you got to be able to hear and you got to be able to listen to what God is saying. And if you don't listen, Listen and hear to what God is saying, nor do you understand. You will see hedges as limits, but watch this when you are my God. Even the enemy know that your hedges are protection. Y'all, 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 y'all. Okay. Oh my God. The enemy knows that there's favor on your life because you got a hedge around you. Because you got position parameters. Oh my God. Of prosperity around your life. But it's amazing to me, Sean, that we as his children, we don't even know how much favor we got. You don't know how God, how big, oh my God, how good God has been to you when the enemy wanted to touch your stuff, when the enemy wanted to tear up your life, when any, when the God, oh my God, when the enemy wanted to tear up your ministry, when the enemy wanted to tear up your mind, God had a sheep pen. I'm sorry, God had a hedge. I'm sorry, God had position parameters of prosperity. 
authority around you to protect you and to cover you. Miss Rowena, I came to tell you as you get ready to go to the doctor, please understand I don't care what the doctor is saying. You tell them your pastor said that there are nothing but position. Oh my God. There are nothing but parameters. Position around your life. Oh my God. And it's based for it is there for your prosperity. I came to speak to your spirit today. I came to tell you you're healed in the name of Jesus. Oh my God. I came to tell you I don't care what the doctor has said. You got to believe that if something do show up there's nothing going to stop me from serving God. There's nothing going to block me from giving God my praise. Everybody stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Listen to me. Um, oh, God. Oh, God. If you only knew how God has blocked so many things from your life. Oh, my God. That's it, Miss Fulton. Because they, because some of them, if they only knew your testimony, oh God, oh God, if they, they, if they really understood how good God has been and how he has continued to block the enemy off your life and watch this they didn't know that all you were steadily trying to do was heal God for your own house God I don't know what you're doing for everybody else but God can you please just come in and talk to me can you please come in and lean on the side of my bed sit on the side where on my car in my closet where I have my secret place God come in and visit me why because God I want to know what you're doing I want to be tapped into the spirit. I want to be tapped into the hedges that people don't know about. And the only way that you can know that the hedges are there is that you tap into the spirit. And sometimes the enemy will be used to let you recognize there are some position parameters in place already. God got some stuff already set up for you. But I need you to hear my voice. You won't hear it with the natural ear. You're going to need the spiritual ear. You're going to have to get in his word and sit there and let God, oh my God, deal with the place where you're frustrated. God, what are you saying? Anthony, I'll tell you this, man. If you're going to marry her, make sure you hear the Spirit. Mr. Lee, I suck at a lot of things, but I got a passion to chase after. I'll be whatever they want me to be. But one thing you won't tell me is about my passion for God. I want him. Do y'all hear? Wait, 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 wait. I want him. Sister Christian, I want his, I want to know his voice. We don't have time to waste. You don't have time to waste. You don't know the day the hour if you if you did wrong go say you're sorry put your gift down don't you serve another second go tell them you're sorry because you don't have time to waste you don't know tomorrow's your day if God is calling you and he's saying I need you to, to come up I need you to mature in the things of God God help me because I don't want to be in the way Stopping what your spirit is trying to do. I want to hear your voice. So as a shepherd, as the shepherd of this house, my assignment is to stay clear, Reverend, Reverend Kute. I got to stay clear of 
issues and things that's going to distract me. Because I want to hear what God is saying for you. God, if I miss it, let me tell him I'm sorry. I don't want to do this just to be preaching. I almost said something. Oh, my God. Those who are watching me on live, let me tell you. No, we don't, we don't do ministry. No, we don't do ministry just to be doing it. Lives are on the line. There are people who need your ministry. There are people who need your anointing. And you ain't got time to waste. So if God is telling you to move in this season, you better move. Don't play with it. And don't have nothing else to be behind that to pick up from that. If you're going to trust them, jump all the way in there. Jump all the way in. Jump all the way in. You tell God, God, I'm all in. I'm all the way in here. Why? Because there's power behind you. The Lord said, tell y'all. He said, he said, tell them. Miles, you're not there trying to force them. That's not what shepherds do. You dare to just be used as a voice. And if they are called and they are signed here, they'll move. If they, if they don't, don't worry about it. That may not be your sheep. Don't play with my anointing. I love my people. Ms. Pam, I do this. I don't, I don't, you don't need no money. I'm, I'm blessed. Me and my wife, we good. And, and, and I, 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 I don't know. I need, to, I need to go. Tristan, you'll be surprised, Tristan. Just the other day, me and my wife were sitting in the house. This is our own little testimony. We sit in the house, and, 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 and y'all don't know that for a couple of months, only my mom them know that Reverend Christian, we didn't have furniture but two couches in our house. Two. I only had two couches, Miss Maxwell. Just a little love seat that my uncle created, Dr. Fleeing. And we had this little chase lounge. For months, me and my wife been looking on Instagram, Sister Scott, of, as to how we gonna decorate not having the money to fill our house. Now, the thing about it, me and my wife have come from the bottom so really, we good if we don't have much because we know how to make it work. Now, here's the deal though. God is so good that we get a phone call, Reverend Kute. This is what serving do. Get a phone call, uh, Miss Alicia, and, he, and, and the guy say, Miles, I need you to go down to this warehouse in Apaca. Go down to the warehouse, when you go down to the warehouse, I need you to pick out whatever you want. Wait, y'all, y'all, no, no, no. I say, wait. She say, well, don't, you need, what you need? You, you need furniture for your living room? I say, well, wait, my house is pretty like, you know, nice little size, know what I mean? But, and she say, well, pastor, you trying to be modest. And you know, I'm gonna be honest with you. I do, I, I don't, cause I'm not a person that get people all in my business, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, oh, I don't want you to know about all this stuff. Then she says, as I'm walking out the warehouse, uh, Dr. Fleet, I'm getting to the door. She said, Miles, didn't you say you needed something else for your other living room? Okay, well, give me that too then. Then I'm walking out the door, Reverend Christian. She said, well, didn't you say you needed something for your patio? Okay, well, well give, me, give, me, give me that too. Then, then she said, well, don't you want to make your back of your yard look good? You want some string lights? Because, you know, God is in the details. I say, now, now mind you, we've been looking at string lights and I wanted a certain kind of light. She say, Miles, here's some LED lights that change color. Give me that box too. Wait, wait, wait. Then she said, wait, don't you got a son named Legend? Don't he need some pampers? Take them number five. Even, watch this, Reverend Christian. When you serve God, he's so let me, let me tell you something. I don't want to tell y'all how much money the furniture costs because it'll 
it'll blow your mind. But let me tell you this. I didn't have to pay for it, Miss Pam. Let me tell you why. Because when you have a heart to serve God and you be faithful over a few things, God will have people set up to release all kind of favor on your life. You just got to hear him and be faithful to him and God will reward you in time. I'm done. Those who are watching me. Now, I know I'm talking live because I know y'all tried to preach it over there in New York. Y'all will catch that in the spirit. You got the right one. But I said that to say to all those who are watching me online. God wants to talk to you. God wants to bless your life. Before we start talking about material things, let's talk about is your heart right right now? Are you saved? If you're in here right now and you don't know the Lord Jesus as your personal savior, come on and get to know him today. Make him Lord over your life. Let God bless you. Let God take care of you. Let God show you how good he is. He loves you. He wants your life changed today. Let him give you a new life. Let him reveal to you a new way. Let him be the shepherd of your life. Trust me, you stay connected with him, you're going to know his voice. You might, not, you might not hear him in the natural. That's why you need a spiritual ear to hear what he's saying. Get in his word. If there's somebody in here you're not saved today, you want to know the Lord Jesus as your personal savior, come on up. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Come on, we take this time out for you. We take this time out for you. If there's somebody in here right now you don't know the Lord Jesus as, watch this, you don't, or, or you don't have a, 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 a membership somewhere. You're not connected with the church. I always advise, get into a local church. Get into a local church where you can get connected, get involved. You can help do ministry, help change lives. If that's somebody in here and you don't know the Lord, number one, as a personal savior, let's get saved today. Number two, if you don't have a church home, come on and join with us. We'll love to be connected with you. Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Well, we give God praise today. Hallelujah. 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 You may have your seats. Listen, let's get ready to give. Thank you for those who are joining us online. We want you to be able to help give today. Listen to me, church. I got an email yesterday. If you have not tithed, if you have not given your offering, your, or you have not tithed, please do so today. Ms. Maxwell, she, uh, in our quarterly business meeting, she told us how much we had to have every month. All right? So we depend on meeting that. We depend on you to help meet that goal. Let's help take care of our church. Your tithe, your offering today, it means a lot. We want to stay committed. We want to stay uh, uh, great, great stewards of God's house. All right? We want to make sure we're doing what we're supposed to do and being responsible to God. If you're watching us, money sign, love PHCC. Money sign, love PHCC. Uh, it's probably on the screens. Um, definitely uh, uh, sold to that. That's via Cash App. You can do that via Cash App. Also, we have Tidely. We have Tidely. You can find us on there, Pine Hills Community Church here in Orlando, Florida. You can give via that. Also, if you're writing any checks, 
You can write, uh, mail your checks in as well uh, to Pine Hills Community Church. All right, and we thank you so much. Ushers, you can come on and come. We want to say thank you. Those who are watching us online, I know you got to go. Till next time, we love you. We appreciate you. We're praying for you. All of those who are watching online, you best believe it. We love you here. Till next time, shalom. Amen.